Right, guys, who remembers my six-point plan? I've done it about 18 months ago. I just wanted to catch up and just see where we're at with it and if we got anywhere near it. I know Ineos have come in now and they, they're going to reset the whole club, which I'm really looking forward to seeing the outcomes in that. But I put together a six-point plan all those months ago and I, I don't think we've got anywhere near it. They obviously didn't, weren't watching, they haven't heard. I think number one, I'll, I'll go on number one, the first one, set the culture. And I think if you look at Eric Ten Hag, he's been trying to do that. That's one of the things he spoke about immediately when he came in, about setting the culture, discipline. Obviously, he's, he's, he's done that with Ronaldo, with Sancho, now leaving. He punished Rashford for being late. Um, and discipline has been something that has been really high on his agenda. Now, you could argue, and there's a conversation to be had, has he done it the right way? Has he done it the, the, the way that he's got the best response from all the players? I think Rashford responded well to it. Sancho, Ronaldo haven't. Um, and they're obviously no longer at the club. One left and one is on, on loan. But you look at the culture, I think you, you go back to when Moyes took over and it was difficult for him. I think every manager that's come in, Louis van Gaal, he, he had the experience so he could sit above everything, which was understandable. But it looked like a lot of players failed to get on board with that. Jose Mourinho, um, obviously won two trophies. He looked like he was on the right road um, in his first season. And when he came second in his second season, he was like, listen, it's one of the best seasons I've ever had. But obviously that all came crashing down in the third. Um, Oli had a positive feeling, that, but he was connection. his connection was with the fans as an ex-player and stuff like that. But I don't know, it just never kind of come to the end and you went to it you know what there was a lot going on that, was it ill-discipline people we've heard since Matic talking about players coming late and stuff like that so when you look at it like that that, that culture still wasn't right then um, so I think that's going to be something that has to be really looked at and, and set but this has to be set from the top the NAS group are in the footballing things are being dealt with and uh, are taken care of by them they have to set that culture now along with the manager. Since Sir Alex Ferguson left, I would say that not one of the managers who came in probably got the culture right. Um, obviously, if you get the sack, then there was something wrong with that culture uh, and other things as well. But Eric Ten Hag is trying, but he hasn't hit it on the money yet. Number two was improve recruitment. Now, this is absolutely vital that Ineos come in this and they get this right. They've got to grab this by the neck and own this area. The recruitment, you, you live and die by recruitment. You sign bad players or players that don't fit in, the team suffers. The fans aren't on board. And I think you look at through all this list I've got here, you've got David Moyes. You look at the signings that he, he brought. I don't think he ever got one of the, the players that he wanted first. Like Fabregas was a player I'm sure I, I know that he wanted, couldn't get him. Like we got players that were maybe second or third on the rung for me. Um, not that they weren't good players, but... I look at the likes of, of Mata and Fellaini, both very good players, top players, in fact, where they played before, but at Man United, were they, were they the right fit for what Man United were, were, were doing? Um, Louis van Gaal, listen, he had some major signings like Di Maria and Falcao. You go, wow, hold on a minute. Some, some stardust here. Didn't fit in, didn't work. Um, and I think van Gaal struggled with that. I think you had Schneiderlin, Depay as well. Timings of them signings maybe in, in their careers wasn't right. Didn't that that was a, a bad spell? Then you look at Jose Mourinho. He brings in Pogba, Zlatan, um, Mickey, Lindelof, Bay. Now you could say that actually done all right with that in periods. Um, Sanchez failed to get anything out of him. Um, but beyond his first season, I don't think that the impact was there with with Jose signings. Um, the caliber of player. Um, identifying those type of players uh, Lukaku another one but we just never seemed to get the best out of these players we didn't see the best Sancho we had, didn't see the best Ferran I think Ronaldo done his numbers what Ronaldo does Maguire I thought was over overinflated price um, so you look at it and you go again have, any, have, have enough of those players play to their potential like you sign players because you go I know their standard have any of them reached that standard consistently for Man United no um, and Eric Ten Hag, this is an area again. I think for for him is you look at it and you go, is he getting it right? You look at the likes of Anthony, um, yet to find any real form. 
um, Anana consistency, um, Mason Mount injuries, Amrabat came injured, um, Hoyland came injured, still still not got off the, uh, on the run of goals yet properly. Um, outside Martinez, who I think has been a breath of fresh air, uh, Casemiro, especially in his first season, was very good. Um, I think, again, recruitment has been a big issue and that's where Ineos need to make sure they have a huge focus on. We've seen the new CEO come in from Manchester City, but I think there's a football element to that. There's a football person alongside him, I'm sure, is going to be coming in. And I think that that person needs to be on their on their money when it comes to the recruitment because we've, we've seen far too many players come into the club and go backwards as players. So my verdict is this needs huge improvement. And this is one of the most key areas in what Ineos are about to kind of go and attack as a group at Manchester United. Structural reset. Now this one I think is a uh, since David uh, David Gill and Sir Alex Ferguson left, that was a huge area as well. Having the right processes in place, um, having the right people lead the club, leading it with a clear plan. Um, and I think Ed Woodward um, and... Richard Arnold, I think, have, have in both of their tenures found it quite difficult to get a, a real process from from them, the director of football, that's still not been, uh, haven't got one, to the manager, to having that process and the people in place to really manage those relationships and those how we sign a player, when we sign a player, why we sign a player, um, and I think you look at David Moyes when he comes in, he completely cleared the decks of coaches. And I think I don't, as a club, I don't think they, they should have allowed that with hindsight. Um, Van Gaal tried to implement his own stru uh, structure by kind of overturning and some aging members of the squad. Um, but I thought he let a, quite a lot of Manchester players who knew the identity of the club, the Chicharitos, um, the Danny Welbecks, the De Silva twins, etc. Those guys go who they they knew what it meant to be at Man United. So, and I think they lost, when we lost that, you lost something, you lost a lot from the club at that point. Um, Mourinho, um, yeah, I, I think Mourinho had a clear idea of what he wanted to do and a clear plan. It's just that I think that he was at log loggerheads with some, with Pogba for one. Um, and the style of play, some people didn't kind of fall in love with that. But I think when you sign Jose Mourinho as a manager, you know what you're getting. Somebody at times can be pragmatic, but someone who wants to win. And I think when it, when he was here, again, he won trophies, but also he got us to second in the league. Um, but the club wasn't in a position to really understand what they wanted. Because I think, as I said, you, you take Jose Mourinho, you know what you're getting. And he ends up getting the sack because they weren't happy. One of the things was playing style. Um, so the, the, the understanding of what they brought in wasn't there. Um, Oli, again, goes back to youth. Brought in a British core of players of, uh, uh, together. Um, Oli obviously understood the club. But listen, I was clamouring for Oli to come in. I, I was, he was at the wheel, wasn't he? That old meme. But um, it just never worked out in the end. Um, and the, the the way it ended was, wasn't was nice as an old player, an old teammate. Um, and I think Eric Ten Hag now, the structural reset while he's in the, in at the wheel so to speak, is going to be interesting because he's got to have a, a really good end to the season to see this through now. Um, otherwise, I think he'll be turned over as a manager if he doesn't improve on what we are, on where we are now. Um, so a structural reset, I think, is... I'm looking forward to now. I haven't really... I don't think it's, it's been done properly in the past. So here we are. Let's see what the, how this one plays out. But I'm quietly confident with Ineos, I've got to be honest. Number four was a clear playing style. Um, and I have to say, um, I think when it was under Moyes when I was there, it wasn't a real clear playing style. And we, the manager tried to implement something, David Moyes, but it wasn't something that the players were happy playing at the time. As I said, we were, we were kind of reacting to other teams and the way that they played and, and dangerous players that they had rather than looking at what we were great at. Van Gaal had actually, he, he had a clear playing style, slow um, possession-based football. I remember Scholes, he said, it's boring football, he labelled it. Um, but a lot of the fans weren't happy of the, the the attacking approach being so slow and laboured. 
Um, Mourinho, always, like I said, had a, had a pragmatic style of football. Um, but he was somebody that knew how to win, knows, knows the Premier League inside out. So why anything else was expected from anybody, I don't know. Um, and Mourinho has been one of the best managers, one of the greatest managers we've seen. Um, Oli, I think there was a bit of an adrenaline rush. I was part of that. Good vibes. Counter-attacking football. I think counter-attacking was his main thing, especially against the big teams. I watched them against Arsenal away once and the, the way they counter-attacked was, was brilliant. And he's, I think his results, if I'm not mistaken, were quite good against the big teams because they were good at counter-attacking with pace. Um, and he was good at building a team around comebacks, which was good. Um, Eric Ten Hag, I think that's where I've been disappointed with Eric Ten Hag's team this year. I think we saw, we saw a little bit of what we thought was going to be an Eric Ten Hag type team last season. This season it's been, I don't know. I don't, I haven't, I don't know what Man United play like now. That's what my, if someone said to me, what did Man United play like? I don't actually know. And that's disappointing. Um, and I think you ask Eric Ten Hag that, his excuse is that it's down to injuries, but you should still have a playing style though. You should still have a team who, who, who play a particular way just because there's certain players that are out, that all goes to to put. I don't think it should be like that. I think if you've even, no matter what injuries you've got, there should be a DNA that's running through that football club of how you play. I think Man City or Liverpool could have 10 players out of their first team squad. They, they wouldn't change the way they play, I don't believe. So... I think that's what we need to sort out now. And I think Ineos coming in now, getting a clear identity of what Manchester United stands for as a football team now is vital as well. And really, really punching that home. Um, so the verdict would be, yep, I think we've seen playing styles, but they've not been suited to what the Manchester United DNA has been in the past. Number five is embracing youth. And I think all of the t all of these managers have done that. I've got to say, Moyes with Janazai, Lou Van Gaal, Rashford, Lingard became Marshall, um, all made names for themselves. Um, he also had Tyler Blackett and, and Paddy McNair and that, and Luke, an 18-year-old Luke Shaw. Jose de Mourinho McTominay was a youth player, um, an academy player graduate that was probably one of the most prominent ones under, under Mourinho. Um, Oli. He, he, he understood the ethos of the clubs and the emphasis on youth, so it was fine. Um, and Ganacho and Mainu have been the big names that have come out with Eric Ten Hag now. So that area, I think they've kept a tradition there. I think all the managers have done well and, and been very respectful and mindful of history at the club in terms of bringing in academy players to the first team. And finally, number six, it was to develop players. And we talk about recruitment being highly important, um, and it is. But once you've recruited those players, you've got to then improve those players and, and get them as part of your team. Bring them in and weave them into the fabric of the club. And I've found it hard to see any of those managers really, really, really consistently do that with the full squad. Um, I think Moyes, it's hard to see really what players developed other than Janazai probably. Um, Louis van Gaal. Um, I think he left Martial and Rashford in good hands for the next incoming manager, Jose Mourinho. Um, under Mourinho, what players like Luke Luke Shaw? I think Luke Shaw was gone, was a shadow of himself under Mourinho. He lost a few players, I think. Um, yeah, it was difficult to see players really. Pogba comes in, doesn't improve. All the signings, it was difficult to see any of the signings. I think Zlatan played his part, but Pogba didn't really improve on what he was. Um, Ole, um, I think he, he, he rebuilt Luke Shaw a bit, to be fair to him. Marcus Rashford was in fine form. Harry Maguire and Martial in that 19-20 season were consistent. But Eric Ten Hag, I think... I think in his first season, he got a huge amount out of Bruno and, and especially Marcus Rashford. Luke Shaw was playing well. And I think his first season, I think he managed to get the best out of a lot of players. Um, but his second season has been a struggle. I think we're halfway, just gone past the halfway mark and it's been a struggle to see the best out of the likes of um, the likes of Martial, Rashford, um, Sancho, we didn't see the best out of him, Varane, Maguire, like I could keep going. Amrabat, Mason's been injured. 
Like it's difficult when you look through the team and go, who's actually improved? Aaron Wambasaka's improved. Dalot's improved. I think Ineos are going to come in. I think out of all of these points that I've made 18 months ago, I think setting the culture is going to be huge for Ineos. I think they're going to go hammer and tongs at that. I think improving recruitment and the processes around recruitment and making sure that they're not getting smashed in a transfer market, having to pay over the odds for transfer fees and wages, which they have done, which has actually hurt them in the long run with players, um, trying to get players out of the club again if they're not if it hasn't worked out. Um, a structural reset is 100% happening and a clear playing style. I think those are the main points of, of out of my six that I think they'll go for and they'll be hammering down straight away once they get in that building. So let us know what you think, man. I've, I've gone at this and I've, I've, I've had a look. I set this out 18 months ago and I don't think it's been looked at closely enough by people at the club. But you guys, I know you guys look at these types of things. Let us know what you think. Shout us in the comments. Let us know how you feel, man. Also, guys, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm noticing some of the data and the stats we're looking at, yeah? There's a lot of you out there watching. You're watching us. You're seeing us. But you ain't hitting the subscription button. You've got to hit the subscribe button ASAP. Don't watch us no more and don't subscribe. I'll find you.